We've been talking about Jesus I am statements that are recorded for us in the Gospel of John. And of course throughout the, what we've been looking at and what John wants us to look at is the Passover experience of Israel. How God brought them out of bondage in Egypt, brought them through the Red Sea, the chaos that he demonstrated having power over and provided for their sustenance in the wilderness. And throughout all of that, there is this desire on the part of the people of Israel, Judeans, uh, that were coming to Jesus that wanted to see a sign. And he had already given them the sign. And they said, we want to see bread uh, come down from heaven like uh, our fathers ate. And Jesus said that he was the bread of life. Well, that causes some confusion. Jesus goes on from that. And before we get into this, because it can be complicated, uh, it is based on three different passages that uh, John would want you to know, that John would want you to look at. They were certainly in Jesus' mind. One is Deuteronomy 7. In that, uh, Moses is recounting to them the covenant of God, the redemption of God, uh, and as he's doing that, he's, he's telling them that they were a grumbling people and that all this time that they had turned their back on God and God's love had, uh, had still been there for them. But the grumbling thing is what you need to get in Deuteronomy 7 because that's what these people are going to be doing. The other two passages are from Isaiah 55 and Isaiah 56 and Isaiah 54 as well. In those passages, there is the revelation, the prophecy of God uh, redeeming his people and bringing them out of exile. Uh, and it, you must remember that what God does with Israel is a microcosm of what he does for the entire world. And certainly that's the case when we look at it with Jesus, drawing upon Israel's history that they would have understood from Isaiah, that they would have understood from Deuteronomy, uh, that there is this... Uh, looking back into their own uh, history with God, that just as God chose them in Deuteronomy 7, as Moses is reminding them that God chose them not because they were special in and of themselves, not because that they were worthy of it, and certainly because they weren't a moral people or had even been a faithful people. God did so uh, out of his own loving kindness to make them a nation through which his love would be displayed to the world. The same thing is going to apply to these people in trying to say uh, anyone who comes to Jesus, he will in no wise reject. And so that's what we look at when it said that uh, they want to make him a specific kind of Messiah, a political Messiah, a king like they wanted to have. And Jesus is going to remind them that God's sovereignty uh, trumps your desires. And until you become humble enough to recognize God's sovereignty and to then you will never be able to taste the bread of God. But there's also the drawing of God that we're going to look at. So let's dive into this. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. Wow, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? And that's, of course, talking about our spiritual hunger. All of us hunger for God. Every person hungers for God and thirsts for God and thirsts for that righteousness and thirsts for being with him and being whole and being what we're supposed to be. I don't care whether you claim to be an atheist, agnostic, or whatever you might claim to be. There is a hunger and a thirst for God that is only satisfied by feeding upon God. And that only food that God provides is His Son, Jesus. So Jesus is the bread, and he who believes in me will never thirst and will never hunger. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So God's will is to draw people to himself. God's will is to redeem the nations, as we see in Isaiah, uh, certainly uh, 55 and 56 as well. And, and certainly 57, when you get to the uh, individual servant who gives his life for the ransom of many. So in all of this, there is this sovereignty of God. His will is to redeem, to restore, to call out a people unto himself, and he's in the process of doing that by the Holy Spirit. And every time the gospel is proclaimed of Jesus Christ, uh, there is this drawing to come to him. Read Isaiah uh, 55. That, that, that He says, all who hunger and thirst come to me. Uh, why waste your money on buying things that won't satisfy? Come to me and drink and have food and, and uh, you will be satisfied. And he talks about nations coming 
uh, to God in the same way. And he said, let the wicked come, let them repent. I will not turn them away. Uh, the loving kindness of God. And so this drawing of God is not a, a separating from, but a drawing to. And so uh, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will certainly not cast out. And you can be sure that if you have come to Jesus Christ in faith and trusted in him and in the person of Jesus and the work of Jesus, he will not cast you away. Um, for I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that of all that he gives me, I lose nothing but raise it up on the last day. The, the, talking about the resurrection, that we have, will be raised up to this new life. Is it eternal life? Yes, absolutely. But it is new creation life. It is not disembodied spirit life out yonder somewhere. It is a life that we get to live in the new creation, the new world, the new universe, and get to explore it and live it and, and taste it and enjoy it and touch it and all of those things. And Jesus will raise us up on that day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in Him will have eternal life. And I myself will raise Him up on the last day. That's a powerful statement, isn't it? Jesus Himself will raise us up. And every time we are in a cemetery or that I'm having a funeral in a graveside, that's resurrection ground, and that is so awesome. Therefore, here we go, uh, Deuteronomy 7. The Jews were grumbling about him. These are the Judeans. Because he said, I am the bread that came down of heaven. They were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he say I came down out of heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me, the sovereignty of God. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught of God. That's Isaiah. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, I say to you, he who believes in me has eternal life. So in all of that, there are two things you need to keep in mind. One, that God's desire is to draw people to himself. That is somewhat of a mystery to me. I, that's God's sovereignty. But I do know that from Scripture and the totality of Scripture that God, every time that the gospel is proclaimed, is drawing, wooing, drawing people to him. Uh, and there is this, that's also this, uh, the initiative of God and also the response of humanity. That all who come, and all are invited to come, all who come will in no way be turned away. If you come to Jesus and you want to be saved, if you come to him and you believe in him, he will not cast you away. He will save you. And that's eternal life. That's an eternal promise. And that's joy everlasting. And you can be secure in that knowledge that if you come to Jesus in simple faith, trusting that he is who he is, in the finished work and in the person of Jesus Christ, as a unique son of God who gave his life on the cross to pay for your sins and mine, and that he was raised on the third day, and that he will, uh, that because of that, our sin debt is paid. The black and dark demonic powers that we talk about, uh, Satan is talked about in the scripture as those dark powers that want to uh, destroy uh, and to dominate and to enslave. Their power is broken. And you can have that today. You can have that by coming to Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying. Trust in him. Trust in the will of the Father that he wants to save you. And it's by his love that he draws us to him through the preaching of the word, through the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray that you know that. I pray that you have tasted the bread of life and know eternal life and know that hunger and thirst is satisfied in him. Uh, so, and, and we continue to hunger and thirst in the sense that we never grow tired of feeding upon him and learning of him and learning of God through him. Uh, so I pray that you know that. Listen, God loves you. More importantly, uh, he gave his son to demonstrate that love for you, that uh, you might have forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and joy indescribable right here and right now. Hey, I hope to see you Sunday at 9.30 for our worship, 10.45 for our small groups. If I don't see you then, I'll see you Monday. God bless you.